Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my review of the Leatherman Free K4, a knife-based multi-tool. You are at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. All right, the current price on this is $90. They're on Amazon. I will include a link to this as well as other Leatherman products. I've got a lot of usage footage coming up, but first, here's a flyby to give you a closer look. So you saw there's two locks on this, one for the blade and one for the other fold-out tools. All right, the blade is a two-tone satin and stonewash finish. Now, the blade length is 3.3 inches, and the steel is 420 HC, right? It's a high carbon, stainless. It's a sheep's foot design with a partial hollow grind, and I'd say it's meant for utility. All right, here, here's the knife in hand, or the multi-tool in hand, I should say. You see the pocket clip there, right? Spidey drop coming at you, kaboom. So you can open it that way, or you can open it the normal way with the opening slot. It opens pretty smoothly. I mean, I'm, that's my offhand. You know, I'm left-handed, but I can still open it with either hand. That's the lock release there. All right, so you can unlock it and close it with one hand as well. Very convenient, right? And, you know, the big thing this has over some Swiss knives uh, is the locking blade. All right, another spidey drop. Boom, hitting like a sumo. Now to get at these other tools, you push right there, right? You push on the partial tangs and you can deploy them. There are magnets that hold them in, right? But they're not like super strong magnets, so don't worry about that. All right, you splay them out and each of these tools can lock when you, uh, when you fully deploy it, right? It's got, so it's got four fold out tools, but they have multiple functions, right? Uh, they are, the spring-loaded scissors right there can be useful. You got a screwdriver with a bottle opener uh, there. There's two more screwdrivers. This is an awl, but it also has a mini screwdriver at the end. And it is also a reamer. And this is a package opener, a pry tool, and a screwdriver, at least uh, according to Leatherman. Okay, let's do some fun stuff with this. We're going to start off using the awl, or the... Uh, the chisel ground edge of the reamer to strike a fire steel and I'm starting with this because I like fire now uh, it's uh everybody likes like who doesn't like fire dude uh, how many bushcraft videos have I watched that I just stared into the fire thinking about my life no I'm just kidding uh, now the chisel ground edge on this it'll make sparks very well so uh, uh, bushcrafters if you were wondering if you could strike with it you can of course there's so many other things you could uh, use as a striker, but just in case you want to use this. Oh yeah, and let's hear it for the moldy rock of fire starting right there. I got a lot of rain. All right, so this is also uh, usable as an awl and as a reamer. Now, technically, a reamer is a, it's like a hand tool that can create or enlarge a hole. Yes, hey, Get your mind out of the gutter. No, we've all enlarged holes in our day, especially when you're young and good looking. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so there it is, uh, the the reamer function. And it does work well. It does work well as a reamer. That's just an old, like a piece of firewood from batoning in some other video. Right, those are mechanics brand gloves. People ask about that. Mechanics with an X. Pretty useful. Mine are pretty beat up from years. Of serving you as a gear reviewer okay so that's what it did you can see yeah it does I mean the reamer function does work well uh, you could drill all the way through if you wanted to all right so it works as a reamer now the uh, the all function like an all is a leather punch but you can also punch through Cordura or in this case that's an old sheath I no longer need and it's two layers of thick canvas right and of course you're punching through for to relieve your anger. No, you're shanking this fool because, well, you can sew with an awl, like you can make, all right, I can't make them, but I've seen people take a beaver pelt and make themselves gloves by sewing with the awl. So basically this works well to punch through uh, textiles. I'm sure it would punch leather as well. All right, and the last function of, of this one implement, the mini screwdriver, that's one of my old Emerson knives and I I loosened that screw so we could tighten it because that screw just happens to fit the mini screwdriver. Right, so yeah, it's a little screwdriver. And uh, check out back in the day, remember this knife? It's a pretty cool, pretty cool Emerson. Haven't bought an Emerson in years. 
All right, so while we're doing the screwdrivers, let me show you the best screwdriver on this. That's my Kershaw Camp 12 machete, by the way, and uh, it's going to donate a screw. All right, so this is the best screwdriver on this because it locks. They all lock, but um, a lot of the Victorinox Phillips drivers don't lock. So it's good that this locks. It has reach. It's thick. It's a strong screwdriver, and that particular size is going to fit uh, a lot of screws in my experience. So you see it works pretty well. I loosened and then tightened that screw that holds the handle onto the tang of the Kershaw Camp 12. Camp series by Kershaw. It's a good series for the money. So there you go. Okay, now this, this is the package opener, right? And that's also a screwdriver. That's what the package opener does. It's designed to cut with the corner, but not to cut too deeply so it's not going to damage what's in your package, right? So that was the package opener function. They also say it's a screwdriver, but because they made this a pry bar and a package opener, they had to grind this asymmetrically, and uh, it's, a little, it's a little less thick than many similar flatheads, right? So it's a little bit wobbly, like it might not fit your particular screw snugly, right? So it's a little bit wobbly, but that's the trade-off of a multifunction items so in a pinch yes in a pinch sure you could use it as a screwdriver right so three different functions on this not really crazy about any of those but i you know i i would try to think what else would i want in that slot i would have to think about that okay coming up the pry bar function this has a lot of limitations you have to use common sense i would not really recommend using it to pry in this manner with a lot of force because if you hold it by the handle, the pivot is a huge weak point and you risk breaking your tool, right? So what I would recommend uh, is just using it as a mini pry and choking up on the fold-out tool, right, as I will show. But here's the problem. When you choke up onto the fold-out tool, like, like I'm doing there, much less reach and much less leverage. So it becomes an even shorter pry tool. So very limited, but there it is. Okay, uh, the blade, let's do the blade. Here is initial sharpness. Pretty good. And this is when I first unboxed it. So it came pretty sharp, but what can it do against tougher, tougher foes? Here it is, the utility function using it like a utility knife, which I, I don't necessarily recommend, but there are times when unexpectedly you got to do this and, you know, maybe you just don't have a utility knife with you or whatnot, or maybe it's only one or two boxes, so you're just going to use your folder. The edge is slightly forward of the Ricasso, so it can get hung up, so be careful not to get hung up on that part when you're cutting through, but it does pretty well on the cardboard. That cardboard is a little thicker than normal, it was just a, a heavier package, I guess. I got a lot of subscribers that work in uh, stocking, shipping, inventory, deliveries, trucking, stuff like that. There's a lot of packages and containers around, so the chance of using their folder in this kind of utility function is actually quite high, right? So it, it's a good thing to know if your folder is good at that. And uh, the blade shape on this does kind of lend itself to, to this, as well as to draw cuts. All right, but by the way, check out the text description box. Not only will I have the whole Leatherman line, you can do some Christmas shopping, but I will have a budget section that will be $40 or less multi-tools, so be sure to check those out. All right, there was more cutting, but y you get the idea. Uh, it can cut cardboard really well. It's all gummed up with uh, some you know adhesive and stuff now but I'll clean it off. So if you have to use it as a utility knife, uh, there it is. All right, a more, uh, a more bushcrafty function, some woodwork with a little shard of firewood. Uh, it does well at the woodwork or the whittling, uh, surprisingly well, probably just because it was still fairly sharp, so still fairly new, and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the main rule of whitn whittling. You gotta have a, a sharp blade first of all. Now this blade being a 420HC, you know, normally in the folding knife world, 
a folder with, with that steel of this size would be somewhere between, it would be around $40, you know? Like, uh, for a long time, a buck 110 classic knife uses that steel, for example. Right, so if a normal fold, if this was just a folding knife, I, I would say pricing should be around $40, right? So you have to think to yourself, those tools that are on the back, are they worth like that additional 50 to you? You know, oh, and sorry for the wind noise. I did leave the volume on, but I turned it down. But people, if, if, if I turn off the volume, it disorients people, so compromise. But yeah, are those extra tools worth the extra, let's say, $50 to the price? Really depends on your job. Like, if you have a job where you need a knife and some screwdrivers, maybe this is for you. So you see my handiwork there. This was surprisingly good at the whittling, but yeah, sharp knife. Sharp knife will make you a pointed stick, right? Or a stake. So if you need a folder and you often use some screwdrivers, but you don't need pliers, then I think that that's who this is for, right? So it's kind of a it's kind of a specialized specialized item. Okay, switching gears. I've had some requests from backpackers. They want to know if they can use the blade on their multi-tool for food preparation, chopping up their food. These are ultralight backpackers that they don't want to carry multiple utensils. They want to double up on the uses. So can you food prep with this? Well, I'd say yes. I mean, it's not exactly as good as uh, your typical very thin, full flat ground uh, kitchen utility knife. But if you're do if it's doing double duty, then yes, that's Chinese cabbage. That's bok choy. It's pretty good, pretty dang healthy. But yeah, to the the ultralight backpackers, yeah, you can food prep. And uh, I didn't, you know, you you could probably. Uh, uh, process a squirrel for example with it too you, you know you, you bush crafters but yeah so there as requested a little food prep with the uh the folding knife all right some comparisons i want to talk about the grind all right so we're talking partial hollow grind versus the you know the, the full flat on that manix that spider comb manix so the leatherman has a narrow relief grind and so does the spider co but because the Leatherman has that partial hollow and there's a tall bevel right behind that relief grind, it's just not as good at slicing deeply into things as, uh, as that Spyderco would be, for example. All right, another comparison with my Microtech SoCom Elite. And as you can, again, you can see, I just don't like the combination of the that hollow with the narrow relief grind. I think it causes a little resistance a little speed bump effect and uh yeah i mean you can see which one would slice better all right brutal comparison between two leathermans civil war what do you think of this the blade on the skeletal versus uh this k4 most people would say that that skeletal blade will be better at slicing into things because the relief grind almost melds into the flat grind. And uh, the 154CM on that model is a bit better too. All right, switching gears, bottle opener demo. Got some root beer here. Remember root beer when, when we were kids or when I was a kid? It was pretty popular. Yeah, I don't keep alcohol around anymore because I just tend to drink it all when I do. Um uh, but I did I did find some root beer around. So yeah, the bottle opener works pretty well. All right, the scissors. All right, the, the easiest test. Can they cut paper? No, not yeah, they can cut paper. So if uh, if you work in an office and it's not paperless, there you go. All right, but we got some harder materials coming up. Uh, but first, I what I did was uh, I folded it. So that's like an eight layer uh, bunch of folded paper. And yes, it can cut eight layers of paper at once. Can anything stop the scissors? Uh, all right, so yeah, those were pretty easy. Pretty easy test for it. Some other materials. There's that thick cardboard. It does okay on the cardboard. It can, uh, yeah, it can handle the cardboard. Come at me, cardboard bro. No, 
I had someone tell me that um, they were like a cardboard expert and they were telling me what you're allowed to call cardboard and what you're not. Uh, but I just kind of blacked out when they were telling me because I didn't care. I'm just going to call anything even vaguely like cardboard is going to be called freaking cardboard. Okay, here's some twine, some cord straight out of India. I was surprised how well it did on the cord. Uh, I found if you cut with the very end of the scissors, uh, it can cleanly cut the cord, right? But not not so if you cut with other other parts. Um, but yeah, it did really well on the on the cord. And right here are here is some uh, plastic bindings. These are the type of bindings you get when you are shipped pieces of glass, tiles, sometimes books, anything roughly tile shaped. Sometimes they have these bindings around them to keep them from sliding around. Uh, so yeah, it does really well on cutting the plastic bindings. So a group photo, final thoughts, where does this fit in to the Leatherman line? Well, if you have a job where you need a blade and you need some screwdrivers and possibly scissors, but you don't need pliers, then that's where this would fit in. A lot of people do need pliers and that's why the Skeletool is one of the biggest competitors to this, to this new Leatherman, right? So it's very situational. Um, it's not a no-go, but it's definitely not a must-have either. That's my honest opinion. It's situational. Some people will find this to be great for their needs. Other people, you might want the rebar, the sidekick, the skeletal. A lot of people carry the surge, right? So, but if for some reason you don't need the pliers, that's when you would consider this knife, right? Or this knife-based multi-tool. Also consider the K2, which is... A little lighter, you know, it, it doesn't have the scissors, a li little less expensive. So th there'll be a link to the K2. So maybe after after seeing those scissors, maybe a lot more people will buy the K2 because it just leaves off the scissors but keeps the screwdrivers. I got to say, I do like this K series better than the uh, the T series, right? It, this could, you know, it's an attractive knife. It could be... Uh, one of the best sellers of the new Leatherman series, you know, the P, the T, and the K. Time will tell, but I will include links. And, uh, you know, since Leatherman, even the sidekick now is around 60. So for the budget conscious, I'm going to have a top 20 list of multi-tools under $40 in the text description box as well, because I want to hook you up and help you out, do some Christmas shopping also, Buy some Leathermans for Christmas. The rebar is still pretty awesome. It's about 70 right now. Maybe there'll be a sale. My final verdict on this, I would give the K4 a B-. minus. You know, it's, it's uh, decent, but not a must-have. All right, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. This has been We All Juggle Knives and Multi-Tools. I'm out.